Welcome back. It's just six days until Namibia goes to the polls. Now, is social media a blessing or a curse during campaigns as the campaign fever heats up with just six days to go? In studio, we are joined by that is uh, Dr. Sadrach, uh, Dr. Sadrach Pendulanishi Omeka, to talk on issues that creep in uh, during these periods leading up to the elections, like impact of fake news disinformation and misinformation on elections and citizens voting behaviors is social media and political uh, social media and political communications scholar dr sadrak panduleni homeka we, we, have, we have you on so many times on our program we really appreciate you for always coming to share your expert knowledge on the program thank you so much for joining us thank you absolutely yes let's talk about why people actually engage in fake news and misinformation and disinformation or what are the motives uh, behind uh, the creation of and the spread of, of fake news in your experience? What, what actually builds up this, uh, this whole matter? Good question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and a lot of people are always asking why. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I need to start a little bit, you know, backward, mm -hmm. whereby I'm, I'm saying, you know, face, uh, fake news mm -hmm. is also widely used as, you know, uh, to refer to information, you know, disorder. Yeah. Uh, in the society. Mm -hmm. And usually uh, fake news uh, usually refers to those stories that we come up with. Mm -hmm. They appear to be news. Mm -hmm. They can be spread, you know, on internet or via social media platforms. Usually uh, the creator for these specific stories uh, has got a specific aim, mm -hmm. either to tarnish the image of any uh, person yeah. or to cause confusion or maybe to frustrate an individual or mm. to influence, you know, citizens' perceptions mm. or views about something. Mm. For example, now in this case now, they have to do it to make sure that they manipulate, you know, citizens, you know, uh, brains mm. uh, in terms of who to vote for and why they should not vote for another person. Mm -hmm. So I, I have to start from that side again. Okay. And also fake news is an umbrella word mm. where all the, you know, the, those words like disinformation, misinformation, the malinformation, is yeah. falling. Yes. That's why you can see, you know, with the disinformation, you are purposely doing it. Mm -hmm. Malinfo uh, 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 misinformation, you are not aware that mm -hmm. you are causing harm. But malinformation is based on reality, but it is used to inflict harm on an entity, okay. on an individual right. in that specific organization, just for them to feel pain mm -hmm. until they will become, you know, demoralized and they will not be themselves anymore. So, but why do we engage ourselves in these things? Mm -hmm. So the first thing that I want to look at is like the motives mm -hmm. for you to be engaged, you know, in these information campaigns. Yes. Uh, mostly individuals have, you know, political grudges. Mm -hmm. It can be political grudges, mm -hmm because they were working together, they were mm -hmm. in the same political party, they were in the same, you know, uh, formation, and they split, and now they are in different directions, mm -hmm. and now you want to teach this person a lesson, okay. or you want to say, the followers that are following John, now they should, you know, make a U-turn and come back to me. Mm -hmm. So for that, I have to teach you a lesson through, you know, uh, spreading, you know, the news that are not, you know, authentic, mm -hmm. verifiable, and they are not truthful you know, about you yourself. Mm -hmm. Another thing, you know, why the motive is personal hatred. Mm -hmm. People naturally, they just hate an individual. Mm -hmm. It can be a political leader. Mm -hmm. It can even be like, you know, you just naturally hate, you know, an entity, a political entity. Okay. It can be a political, you know, uh, party or maybe an opposition party, of the official opposition party, but personally, you just hate that. Mm -hmm. uh, another one is anger. You know, we, we have these people that were disappointed by the system. Either they were in a certain political formation and they did not get promotion or they did not get what they wanted to get. Okay. So what did they do now? To, they will take revenge and mm -hmm. they will say, okay, mm -hmm. now we will make sure that we will tarnish the image of yeah. that specific, you know, uh, formation. Yeah. Uh, there are also people that are dominated, you know, by negativity, mm -hmm. you know, about you know, an individual. Mm -hmm. You know, th th there are those people. It's just like, you know, when they look at, you know, the president of a certain or, or, or political party, mm. they are not seeing an individual who is useful in the society. Mm. So they, they, they are, their brain is full of negativity. And therefore, at the end of the day, they will end up now, you know, even creating, you know, this information, you know, uh, posters or voice recorders or any other thing 
a tool that they can use to yes. defame that specific in, uh, you know, information. Uh, another one is uh, political evangelism. Usually when I'm talking about political evangelism, I'm looking at political leaders that are selling, you know, they are selling, you know, their political products or services, you know, through manifestos or rallies or whatever the campaign, you know, yeah. strategy that they are using. Yeah. But um, what they are promising the society is something that they even themselves knew mm. that this thing will not work out even if we happen to be on power. Yeah. So it will not work. Uh, the other one is, you know, lack of poor morals and ethical base. Mm -hmm. Some people, they, they lack, you know, you know uh, morality. Mm. And maybe it's the upbringing or maybe you turn yourself to be that individual who is not that friendly with any individual. Then we have also longevity to become a leader. Mm. Some people forever they are dreaming to become leaders, but they, they were not really prepared and they did not prepare themselves, right. you know, to become leaders. Mm. Because you want to be on power, you want to be in that specific office. Mm -hmm they will start doing things that were not supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. These are just some of, you know, the motives behind this information. Mm -hmm. But what about, you know, the factors that cause, you know, people to misinform others? Mm -hmm. Because they, 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 those ones are different. Um, one of the core issues, you know, digital literacy level of mm -hmm. our citizens. Yes. And the digital literacy level, I'm not talking about because you know how to switch on a laptop or switch on, you know, uh, looking for information on the PC, you know, on your mobile phone. Yeah. But you should be able, you know, to navigate through all the, you know, the digital world mm. to see what is relevant and what is not relevant. Okay. Uh, another, you know, factor that contributes to misinformation, whereby I'll be doing things, you know, without knowing yes. that, you know, I was supposed to the, cause harm or inflict pain on an individual, mm -hmm. is not being on par with current affairs mm -hmm. in the society. Or eager to be seen as the first-hand information, you know, dissemination point. No, okay. Some people, they want to be seen like, I'm the first one who have this information. Mm -hmm. So they will share it uh, without, you know, checking, you know, authenticity of and that effects, specific yeah. years. Then they will share it only to learn that, you know, what they shared is not, you know, real. Okay. Or, you know, they, uh, they lack attention to mm -hmm. details, which is almost the same thing. And we have the self-proclaimed knowledge hub, mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, you know uh, everything, you're an expert. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people, they uh, associate, you know, themselves with negativity or negative people or too narrow-minded people. So if, if your circle it does not consist of different people with different understanding. Yeah. So you will end up not being well informed about, you know, a specific issue. And mm -hmm. because of that gap that you have there, mm -hmm. chances of you, mis you know, informing people mm -hmm. is very high. Mm -hmm. But for my information, we said it's based on reality. This is how it come out. Mm -hmm. Because as an official or a leader or a manager, like in my case, you know, I'm a head of department. Mm -hmm. Whatever that you do, you have to make sure you do it thoroughly. What do I mean by thoroughly? You know, you have to verify documents before you send them out because it can have, you know, it is a, a document that has to do with the organization, but just because of the spelling error that is there, yes. you forgot an S, you forgot, you know, just, you know, something there, just one word. Then the message in that specific, you know, communication, you know, uh, document, uh, it, it will be twisted and they will twist it to their advantage, not mm. to the advantage of your institution. Your institution will lose, but their institution will, you know, gain, mm -hmm. because now they will blackmail you in that manner. So those are just some of the motives on why we engage in some of this, you know, fake news, you know, uh, uh, phenomenon. Very well. Now, yes. To what extent does fake news, uh, disinformation or misinformation actually influence uh, voters' behavior or actions? Because people don't know that the, 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 the amount of things that they actually put out on social media can yes. actually influence the number of votes that go to a certain party or a certain uh, electoral individual that, that, that's campaigning in the, in the, in the election. Yeah. What, to what extent does the, the increase information, misinformation actually influence voters' behaviors? One can say greater extent. Yeah. Why am I saying greater extent? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, uh, uh, fake news can cause confusion. Okay. And at the moment, as a citizen, especially now with few days left before elections, mm -hmm. and, you know, somebody come up with a story which is not true about, you know, maybe the current or ruling party okay. or a certain, you know, official, you know, opposition party. Mm -hmm. And they will, you know, come up with that issue like it is a, a corruption, you know, uh, a case. Mm -hmm. So people will change their mindset, mm -hmm. especially young people, they can easily be influenced by this type of things. Right. So they will find themselves in that, you know, confusion they do not know whether 
they should go and vote for that specific, you know, current political party, mm -hmm. or maybe they should go and vote for the new party. Mm -hmm. You know what will happen again? It will, it might lead to voter apathy, and the people will end up now not even going to the voting stations. Mm -hmm. So that's one. So confusion is, you know, a, a big issue there. Mm -hmm. It might also lead, you know, to instigations, you know, during, you know, uh, election ca ca campaigns, or even during the actual voting day. Mm -hmm. So people will be instigated against one another, and that's why you will see in some countries, people will end up even fighting at polling stations because of those instigations that are coming up. Yeah. And it, or just because of what they have read or what they have seen in newspapers, which is not true. It will also lead to loss of trust uh, that, you know, uh, people will end up not having trust or in that specific individual yeah. or that specific political party. Mm -hmm. uh, indecisiveness, I think that one I have said it because we will be like, should I go or I should not go? Yeah. Uh, uh, it might also lessen loyalty, your loyalty to that specific you know, entity or political formation where you would like to be. Yeah. So it is really having a negative impact, especially if it is being spread and disseminated by people that are more influential. Mm. And that's how they are doing it, because the person who is doing it usually is a person who is more influential, has got more followers, mm -hmm. and people strongly believe in him or her. And the moment they see that, then they will say, no, this is the reality, and therefore, let us not, you know, go and vote for this specific individual. Mm. Yes. Very well. we, we've seen a trend now of late, especially on social media, because it's, it's a widely used platform by a lot of people. Yes. So what advice do you have um, for, for politicians or citizens about fake news, disinformation and misinformation? And, and, and is it your belief that Namibians actually are aware or literate about political fake news, uh, disinformation and misinformation? Yes, I, I, I have to start with this, John. Uh, you know, our culture is clear mm -hmm. that one cannot laugh at another person's suffering or ridiculing another individual. Mm. Why am I saying, you know, at the beginning? I would like to tell the politicians that, you know, uh, instead of, you know, looking for, you know, bad thing in your competitor, okay. and that's what you are just trying to expose. Mm -hmm. So it's better for you just to sell, you know, to the society what are you going to offer them. Mm. But what I'm saying, I also want to tell the politicians and even citizens in general, mm. that, you know, political fake news, it can destroy peace and tranquility in the society. If we are not careful, we might find ourselves, you know, in, you know, in those civil war and some other things like that. I know Namibia is far from that yes. because we are a peaceful nation. Yes. Uh, it might lead also to, you know, uh, dehumanization. It might also, you know, destroy, you know, relationships. It mm -hmm. might lead to harassment and bullying because that's what I'm saying. So I, I just want to tell them that, you know, fake news, political fake news, it might lead to all these things. But, you know, my own you know advice to them is let us stop mocking each other on social media so let us avoid this thing of mocking each other as political leaders as politicians or as citizens you know you find citizen versus citizens you know trying to mock each other there yeah. on social media yeah, yeah, yeah. let us run away from that mm -hmm. also you know let us stop purposely spreading news that are not true and they are unfounded and they are not, you know, uh, authenticated. Let us, you know, revoke and refrain from grudges, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> and, you know, this anger retaliation, because a number of our polit politicians, they are engaged in political retaliations. Right. So John said something about me mm -hmm. negatively. I will go back again to the platform to say something, you know, that will make him to feel that hit. Mm. No, no, no. Let us now refrain from that. That's what the advice that I have. Let us be empath uh, empathetic mm -hmm. and share solidarity messages okay. when we are there. Mm -hmm. I know we are in different political parties, mm -hmm. but we are in one society mm. and one country. So we should not forget that, you know, we are in Namibia at the end of the day. Also, we should do, avoid redirecting messages aimed at informing or sensitizing, you know, citizens mm. to suit your personal agendas. Mm. That's very, very critical, you know, when it comes to uh, uh, individual, you know, politicians. So don't only look at yourself to benefit, or your political party to benefit, but look at now uh, the wider society, mm. you know, need mm. to benefit from what you are, you know, spreading. So if you can see that the message is not relevant, it's better for you just to keep it to yourselves or within your inner circle, you know, uh, yeah. instead of putting on, on social media. Mm. That's what I have for them. Absolutely. Very, mm. very good advice, I'm sure. 
As a political, uh, as a scholar in social media and, uh, and, and politics, share with us your observations uh, with regards to fake news, um, disinformation, misinformation. What have you observed online and offline in terms of what really is happening currently right now with, that affects the, 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 uh, the political landscape? And can you share with us examples perhaps of, uh, that, may have, that, that, that are likely to, you know, to have an effect on the voting behavior? Oh, yes. I observed several issues. One, you know, if uh, recently you just checked, you know, on mm -hmm. social media, uh, apparently, you know, the ruling party Swapo mm -hmm. <coughs> received over 100 million uh, from uh, USAID, yeah. uh, apparently for them to ignore, you know, uh, uh, Honorable Ekanjo's, you know, motion that he tabled, you know, in parliament. It is not true. But, you know, the way, you know, the person crafted that poster, mm -hmm. it was crafted in such a way, you know, people to, you know, to hate, you know, a certain political entity and mm -hmm. also the individual that is involved in that. Right. Uh, you have also seen something, you know, about, you know, founding father, you know, uh, people, you know, apparently, you know, the founding father condemned, you know, Swapo leaders, mm -hmm. you know, for that campaigning. Mm -hmm. Did he really say that? If you read the content of that specific poster, you can see that it's something that's purposely crafted, yeah. you know, to confuse the minds mm -hmm. of individuals. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, also on social media, there is also, you know, uh, uh, an article that is, you know, running. Uh, it looks like a video about, you know, our former, uh, you know, first lady, the third first lady, uh, Monica Gregos. Uh, apparently, she's revealing the truth about how she became rich. Mm. Is it really, you know, a, a true <laughs> thing? But I have seen a lot of people commenting on it. It is even, you know, written in Afrikaans. Mm. So, and you can also listen to the audio and the translation and all those things. You can see that this thing is not true at yeah, all. Yeah. That's what I have seen things that are there. People are also using, you know, burning issues as the entry point to confuse the society. One of them, you know, they are sharing, you know, links uh, uh, that are saying, you know, there is a mass uh, recruitment process that's taking place, you know, at uh, Rosink or Rospina, mm -hmm. uh, you know, mine, mm -hmm. uh, or maybe ECN is still recruiting people and, you know, they share it and people try, you know, to click on that link, but, you know, this is just in a scam. Yeah. And, you know, people are joking about national issues like, you know, unemployment, yes. the youth unemployment rate, and, you know, they are making use of it as an entry point for them to cause confusion and frustration among the already frustrated, you know, societal members. So I have observed so many of them that are currently being circulating mm -hmm. and uh, people that are in my circles i'm always you know warning them about them mm -hmm. I remember there's one thing about, you know, uh, an IPC leader, a, a, a lady by the name, you know, Nipodilo. Apparently she was arrested and she was found with, you know, drugs that worth certain, you know, thousands. <laughs> uh, you know, but is it really true? Mm. Uh, one first need to verify, you ask yourself now, is it, this really true? Uh, if you are not so sure, ask people that are closer to you than you find, or closer to that person. Yeah. Is it really true that, you know, Nipodilo was, you know, arrested and mm. she was found with drugs? before you circulated that poster, you know, further. Mm -hmm. So apparently, again, the Russian foreign minister apparently, you know, condemned British government for meddling, you know, uh, in, in internal affairs in Namibia, uh, leading to the elections now on the 27th. <laughs> uh, where is that message coming from? Mm. Uh, is it really true if we go to Russia, then we ask them the, if their foreign minister have said that one already? Mm. So what I'm, I have, I'm observing is that, you know, we have more already that are circulating, fake yeah. news that are circulating. Yeah. But since we have fewer days left before that, mm -hmm. more of this will come out. And the purpose is to either inflict pain mm -hmm or to redirect societal way of thinking if they or perceptions and that, that will affect you know the voting behavior and attitude or perceptions of individuals toward elections mm. so i'm saying let us refrain from this thing if we know that we are responsible citizens and we really want to build this country to make sure that you know uh, namibians will live you know a luxury life mm -hmm. uh, when you are uh, you know elected on power Mirror. Yes. Your views on civic uh, civic engagement or disengagement uh, between politi uh, politicians and citizens on social media is digital media environment friendly and exclusive? Because we can we can see a lot of things such as artificial intelligence, which was a conversation we actually spoke about last mm, time we were here. We see artificial intelligence also being used as a tool to sort of, you know, 
drive people away from elections or voting towards a certain party. Or, because nowadays you'll find that artificial intelligence can create a video or an audio yes. uh, that make it seem like somebody actually is the one that said it, but there's no proof mm. uh, to prove if that actually is true or not. Mm. What, what is your view on this? Yes, um, first I will start here that, you know, what I have seen the engagement mm -hmm. of citizens versus, you know, the politicians or political leaders there. Yeah, yeah. Um, citizen to citizen engagement mm -hmm. on social media platforms like, you know, uh, somebody will drop a question there or a topic for discussion for, or for advice. Yes. Then other citizens are coming in and they will critic. What, where, where I am saying, you know, that platform is not that friendly and it's not for people that have got soft hearts. Mm. <laughs> you, you should have a, a, a hard core, you know, heart that will not be broken down by an individual because well, course, yeah. you go there purposely, do you know, to educate someone mm -hmm. just to share something that's more informative. Mm -hmm. But many of the 90% of the comments that we get, they are all negative. So that's what I have seen. Even our political leaders, when they are making speeches, we know when they are at, you know, star rallies. They are speaking, but here we are busy commenting mm -hmm. negatively. Mm -hmm. What we are looking for, we are looking for loopholes. We are looking for where they did not perform. We are looking at, you know, corruption cases. So, uh, of which I am always saying, of course, yes, they were corrupt or they are corrupt, but is that really the point or the reason why we are going to vote for you? Mm -hmm. So, we would just want to know, mm -hmm. why should we vote for you? So, uh, the engagement on these social media platforms, there is a disengagement, yeah. uh, especially when it comes to the political leaders, you know, versus the citizens. Not all of them are, you know, replying back, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, directly in the acting with citizens, you know, on social media. Mm -hmm. Some of them, they even recruited, you know, social, manager, social media, maybe managers, who are responding to all the queries and the issues that are being raised on their political, on, on their social media platforms. Yes. But it's not actually them. Mm -hmm. And what citizens wanted is for them to have access to this person. Then they will have a one-to-one, -one, you know, online session with this specific individual. Yes. Uh, I have seen also our leaders, you know, they are shying away. Most of them, they are shying away from these things of, you know, presidential what debates. Mm. You know, some of them, they are shying away from them. But that's the only platform where there was supposed to be a direct, you know, engagement. You and, you know, the uh, citizens. So right. that you'll be able not to articulate and tell them, this is the reason why you have to vote for me. Mm -hmm. This is the reason why you have to vote for my party. Uh, another thing that I have seen there, there are too many reactionaries. Mm -hmm. People are angry there mm -hmm. <laughs> on social media. They, they are just too angry. You say something, then they will start, you know, they will try to bring out, you know, something that was supposed to be private and confidential about you. Mm -hmm. Something that belonged to the office. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I only made a statement that was supposed to benefit, you know, the public. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what the comments will say, they will reveal private and confidential issues, either about an institution mm. or about an organization. Sometimes also in the irrelevant. Yeah, they are irrelevant, mm. you know. Mm. And sometimes you don't even want to tell a person that, you know, the comment that we are making is, you know, mm. is not educative enough. Mm. So that's what I am seeing. And uh, I am urging, you know, fellow citizens now to refrain from doing these things. Mm. Let us not be too negative because the moment you are angry, you are chances of you doing right things are minimal. Mm. Because what possesses you is just that negativity and that anger. Mm -hmm. And it will end up even, you know, start insulting people, you know, without knowing mm. that you are supposed to insult John. If I'm, a po if, I, if I'm a politician or an individual taking part in the elections, I just want your personal opinion on this. Mm. Uh, to what extent um, do I respond or reply uh, to individuals that you said are angry, not having having the relevant information about a certain post that they've made. To what extent, when am I allowed to reply? When am I just allowed to just leave it alone and leave it on social media? Uh, first, first study, <laughs> first study the comments as they are coming in. Yeah. And you know, this is what I usually does. Mm -hmm. When you are studying these comments also, also try to zoom in. They are coming from who? Mm. Who is this person that's making this thing? Mm -hmm. In most cases, you know, on their social media pages, you'll be able now to tell, you know, the type of person they are. Yes. So if you see that, um, <laughs> it is better for you not to re <laughs> reply to that special person. Right. To a certain extent, you know, there are those ones that are making allegations. Mm. And if it is a serious allegation that, you know, 
is likely to affect you know your reputation also and it can destroy your you know uh, uh, or, or your character mm -hmm. or it is likely also to touch on your human rights okay. because even if you are a politician you still have human rights just mm -hmm. like any other person mm -hmm. then that person try at least mm -hmm, to one send an inbox message mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. if to see if they will reply i know for sure they will just you know screenshot it again they will bring it back here mm -hmm. but do not involve in this thing of you know a, a, a verbal or word exchange on mm -hmm. social media with them so study them observe them are they coming from people that are focused and you know are well informed about societal issues mm -hmm. or is this comment just coming from a person because the person is frustrated by the system mm -hmm. or is this comment coming from a youth who is frustrated because the person is unemployed okay. you see then that will tell you how and which type of message are you going to provide to the two groups mm -hmm. because if I am frustrated just because I did not get a job, yeah. my your response as a politician will be different mm -hmm. than when I am reacting just because, you know, I was frustrated by the system, then I was kicked out in a certain political party. So they should, you know, try to be well informed about the issues mm -hmm. as politicians, and they should study individuals, and they should study those, you know, uh, uh, comments before they react to them. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know, it will lead to political reactionaries, and political reactionaries sometimes, you know, on social media you will end up being insulted you know and discredited you know more even more yeah. than what they are saying absolutely. so they need to be vigilant yeah. and observable absolutely very yes. important information as saying, <laughs> yes <laughs> lastly before we let you go doctor um are you foreseeing more of this uh, that is taking place on social media uh, as the voting day is, is getting near uh, whose responsibility actually is it uh, to educate the society about these because everybody now will say oh is it the ecn Whose responsibility is it uh, to educate people on this? Of course, more and more of this type of you know fake news will come. Mm -hmm. uh, even the, the, during the you know on the twenty seventh, there will even be more. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, post elections on the twenty eighth, there will even be more. So yeah. the, the, these ones will keep on coming. But whose responsibility is it? <laughs> you and I. Mm. It is our responsibility. Mm. It is our responsibility as you know, citizens in this country, as residents in this specific township. It is our responsibility to educate one another. Education usually starts at home. Mm -hmm. So if you understand these things and you are not, you know, saying it at home to teach you know people that you are staying with yeah. before they go into the public and they will start and you know creating mockery there. Yeah. So then, uh, who is going to do it? It is not only the responsibility of ECN. It's CN cannot, you know, satisfy all of us. Mm. So that civic education needs to be performed at different levels, in different institutions, schools, universities, you know, at individual levels, and wherever we find ourselves, especially we found ourselves in saloons and the barbershops. We found ourselves, you know, at, you know, bars mm. there. Mm. So when you are, they bring up a topic like this, problem is that we don't like, you know, bringing up constructive, you know, topics of, you know, to discuss them when we are at social, you know, environment. Right. So it is our all, it is our responsibility, collective responsibility as citizens of these countries, though primarily, you know, we have ECN that's driving this. So let us do it, whether you are working or you are not working, whether you are, you know, black or white, male or female, all of us, we have this responsibility because more of this are coming and we need to be vigilant so that our people will not fall, you know, uh, victims of fake news. Absolutely. Dr. Sadrach, it's always a pleasure to hear this expert knowledge from you. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for having you, for, for, for being with us in the studio to share this very really important information. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Sadrach Panduleni Shohameka, he is an expert in social media and political and uh, communication, just sharing with us the importance of social media, misinformation, disinformation, and of course also uh, the actions that can take place when one is attacked on social media and how to verify that information, how to, to go about uh, you know, verifying this information and also making sure that you don't only take this serious to actually you know, uh, uh, affect or, or perhaps uh, shape the way you are going to cast your vote to come the 27th of November.